we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, to be a father and a son, thank you for giving us this mystery at this time. May do we have a relationship where we're not ashamed to be a son. And the sign that we're a son is to say Amen, but then to remember, and because we're forced to, to say Amen, that's a demon. That's why we, our children are doing well and I'm bringing harm upon the country. Help us to realize properly. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. Let's find it. So if you go home and back, if it's hard to do that, why go home? It's because you have a demon. You and I, whenever we please our flesh, then you're a demon. If you say, oh, I'll do it to the point of death, you know, someone like that, they don't have anything sick. But it's because you don't do things to the point of death that you're sick. Because you idolize your flesh. That's why you don't do well, you have problems. Let's read together. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the steadfastness of Christ. Amen. Please sit comfortably. It's the Lord who directs our hearts. But because you haven't met the Lord, you don't receive guidance and you keep going by my strength, that's why you're ruined. Anything that I do by my strength, then you continually, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, why do you keep getting these difficulties? Because, because you do things by your strength, that's why you fall into trials. If the Lord directs you, then you receive blessings. Everything I do is disasters and curses. You continue to receive trials. So if you have these trials, it's because you haven't received the guidance of the Lord. Let's read it again. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the steadfastness of Christ. Amen. So the Lord directs our hearts. Why is it that I'm not receiving guidance? I keep getting annoyed and I'm complaining. Not just this church. If I was... You know, if I was put in front of the the hallway, if I was put in the hallway and told to give worship there, I, I'd be happy. You know, it was raining. The There was this church that was too small. But outside in the yard, these women and people, they were kneeling. Even though it was pouring rain, they were soaking wet. Not one person, you know, tried to avoid the rain. There was Till the end, they were there. So there are people like that. And then there are people who are making excuses. It's because you have demons inside of you. So who is it that directs my heart? There's no one but the Lord. What what does the Lord do? Let's find Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. The Lord helps me. So it's my helper who has to guide my heart. If I guide myself, then you'll be ruined. So this is why you don't do well. So in this world, it's not me, my parents, no one can help me. If my parents did help me, then there'd be a lot of children who did well. But you have to do four-step repentance and pass blessings down. That's how you do well. It's not by human strength. Let's read. So that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Amen. Only the Lord helps me. He helps me to go to heaven. My sufferings, my heavy burdens, He bears them. And He takes me to my desires to receive blessings. But if we have my sins and my ancestors' sins, then the Lord departs. And that's when I go off on my own way. And that's when disasters and curses happen. You look at those people who don't do well. You could come, but because of your flesh you don't. That person is someone who goes by their strength. So afterwards, they continue to receive trials, problems. Their children um, don't do well. They don't do well. So that's the difference between those who are true and fake. So who is it that helps me? The Lord. How does he help me? Well, he comes into my heart and he directs it. So where does he take me? 
Firstly, to God's love. So if you go to God's love, as much as you love. <clears throat> so if you receive money blessings, you receive everything. That's Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. Let's find Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. So it's by love that you receive everything. So he helps us. So our diseases are healed. Demons depart. We and our children do well. The Lord. So the blessings in front of me. You can either go to hell or you can go to heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. But we have to only take blessings. That's what. That's when a thousand generations receive it. So even if, no matter how much you try, you can't take those blessings. It's the Lord. The Lord has to direct me. So we have to receive the Lord's help. That's why we're here. Is this our men? All this time, you've lived a life of faith as an elder or a deacon. But why is it you didn't do well? Did you ever have a sermon where the Lord directs your heart? You know, before we curse others as fake, the Lord has to direct my heart to take my blessings. But you've never heard of this. And that's why you've only heard things where you didn't do well. That's why you didn't do well. But now let's meet the Lord. So just because you meet the Lord once, well, is it going to last forever? No, you have to meet the Lord daily. You have to meet Him three times a day. Psalms chapter 68, verse 19. Let's find it. So how good is it we're now going the way to do well? You know, you weren't doing well, but now you're going the way to do well, no matter how much you tried. Well, of course, there was no Lord. How could you do well? Who is the Lord? Christ, the mystery of God, four-step repentance. So was there four-step repentance before? No. It was hidden inside of the Bible as the mystery of God, but no one did it. If you don't meet the Lord, you'll go to hell. So we have to surely meet him. Let's see if that's what it says. Let's read verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burden, the God who is our salvation. Amen. So the one who saves us so that we can go to heaven, that God, we have to meet him. And who is he? Well, daily, every day, we have to meet him. We have to entrust our our heavy burdens to him, and that is the Lord. So is it enough just to pray once, to meet him once? No, here it says daily. But some demons say, oh, you only have to believe once and it'll last a lifetime. And that's why they don't do well with their disasters and curses. And so they look at people, they look at us doing well and they think it's strange. Do you preach the gospel with words or with power? It's with power. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. After he gives power, that's when you can preach the gospel. But where? Where do they have power? Where the lame walk? Where demons are cast out? Where cancer is healed? Where as you're sitting there, your hearts become at peace. So for us, this, this works. You know, no matter how good you make something, If you don't have those three wires, then that motor is not going to to work. So what is amen? It's, it's proof that you've become a son of God. If you're sitting there not saying amen, then you're a demon. You're evil. You look at that person, they're scheming. They're in the background. Psalms chapter 5, verse 10. 100% you'll be ruined by your own scheming. So in Masan, there was a government official, a, a schemer, Uh, a male deacon, and with the the female deacons, he was in the background grumbling and complaining. If you hear that and you fall over at that, then you yourself have, haven't met the Lord. You're a demon. It's demons who hear demon talk. If someone said that to us, we'd be like, oh, that's a dog. We wouldn't treat them as a man. But if you have demons, you gossip together. So someone who gossips is someone who hates to he- keep God in their heart. So there's no salvation. So you have demons. So the Lord doesn't direct you. So after doing that, when the church was being built, he was saying, oh, it costs too much money. Oh, you know, he he was preventing the building of the church. And so his son became a monkey. Who is it that saw that? Put your hand up. There's not many. Oh, there's someone over there too. So that his child turned into a monkey. He was in preschool and his whole skin turned black. His mouth became red and he couldn't speak. And he was like, uh, uh. And so I said, the parents 
what sin have you committed? Something that God hates so much. And the wife was like, see, I told you not to do that. So in the background, complaining with the female deacons um, and uh, with the building of the church and his son became a monkey. Don't do those things to eat up your children. Only do the things to receive blessings. So if the Lord doesn't direct your heart, that's what happens. So here it says daily. Let's find James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Daily, we have sin coming from our heart, this greed. That's what causes me to fall into trial. So if you have sin, if you have greed, and you're, you're, you fall into trials, you have demons, because you let that remain, that's why you can't meet the Lord and you go the way of ruin. You may sit there, you know, trying not to be like that, but the demons drag, drag you away, and that person's grumbling, complaining, excuses, making excuses, envying, jealousies. You know, God, does he give you benefit, or does he harm you. Romans chapter 8 verse 28, as long as I'm doing forced repentance, there is no disadvantage. So why make excuses, look at other people's things and fall into trials? Because you're a demon. And what is the source of that? James chapter 1 verse 14, 15. Let's read verse 15. Then when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Amen. So in your heart, if you have this small greed, it comes out 24 hours a day. As soon as you have that, you have excuses. You don't know how to give thanksgiving and you complain. What is it that Almighty God doesn't know? It's He who directs my heart. So last night, I gave you some know-how. What you ask for in faith, in prayer, then you've received. What you say will happen, but it's because we have these doubts. Why do you have doubts? James chapter 1, verse 14 to 15, it's because of this greed that comes out. When you have greed, then demons stick. So if you have demons, no matter how much you call out, Father, Father, there are no answers. So if he has become your father, then already the way you say amen is different. If you're inside of Christ because you've become a son, he's your father, you say amen. Yesterday, there were so many children, but only Kyungyu came to me and, and said, Grandfather and, and the others, they were standing off from afar just looking because I wasn't their grandfather. So that's what's different. Why is it that you just look and you can't say amen because you're not inside of Christ? So when I see someone who's not saying amen, that person's cursed. They're trying to kill themselves and eat up their children. Why are they doing that? What is it they haven't done? Forced at repentance. It's because they haven't done it. If you do forced at repentance, it's not you or I. But he comes inside of me. Then you're able to say amen. So my wife has seen many people who receive blessings by saying amen. So she says, say amen and receive blessings. That's the promise of the Bible. It's saying you've become a son by Christ. You're inside of Christ. So you're able to say amen. You're a son of God. You know, you may connect a phone, but unless that phone company turns on the switch, it's not going to work. So when do we say amen? It's when we've repented. Then who comes? The Lord. When the Lord comes, that's why everything does well. But to meet the Lord, is it once a year, once a lifetime? Daily. Daily. If we meet the Lord, then our heavy burdens we can entrust. If you don't entrust, like Job, 10 of your children will die. All your wealth disappears. Is that what you want to happen or do you want to receive blessings? We have to receive blessings. Whatever my situation you know, whether I'm a housekeeper or let's receive blessings. But even being a housekeeper, Job, his situation, he was a slave in someone else's house without receiving a wage, and yet he succeeded. Well, there's no one here who's in a worse situation than Job. So why is it you can't succeed? Because the Lord isn't with you. With Job, the Lord was with him. So daily, God says to meet the Lord. So as soon as we open our eyes, then that means Joseph, that's what he did. He, but who is it? So what is it that stops this? It's the greed that comes from my heart. As soon as I have a small greed, what happens? You become a dog pig. You don't give thanks. You make excuses. You're a dog pig. Jude chapter 1 verse 16. It's that person that makes excuses, that acts like, that acts like they're so smart. Where am I? 
If you don't see your husband as the Lord, that means you don't do one heart one way, you're not fearing. So when your husband goes to work, you start f- calling up, oh, you know, this person, that person, let's let's meet and have a meeting and get, and what do you do? All you do is sin. And that's why the world's become like this. So the world's supposed to get better, but it's becoming worse. God says to Timothy chapter 3 verse 13 that it will become worse. Does that mean all we have to do is sin and go the way of ruin? No, we have to meet the Lord and receive help. That's why we're here. Let's meet the Lord. We have to meet the Lord. We have to meet the Lord. Who is the Lord? The Lord is Christ, four-step repentance. So we have to do four-step repentance. Then we meet the Lord who helps us. When he comes into our heart, where does he take us? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. He takes us to receive money blessings. So we say love is the greatest. Oh, you know, when we pray, even though we don't have money, as long as we have love, that's dog pig love. Without forced at repentance, that's a dog's love. And we call that love. That's not love. That's a beast. That's not love. Why is it that you're mistaken to thinking that that, that is love? There are so many people on this earth, they say, let's let's meditate. M- meditate. You know, if demons or someone evil is meditate, what's good about that? And that's why someone with a lot of evil, you, you know, they go to prison and in their room, they sit there contemplating and they come out and they do worse things. So it's not contemplating. We have to, it's not contemplating with your head. We have to meditate with our heart to become a man. But, be, but the world doesn't know this. But you know this. Why is it that you're not doing well? Because you don't meet the Lord daily. So to meet the Lord, what is it we have to do? Four-step repentance. Whose sins do we have to give up? Give up? My sin, my ancestors' sins are my sins. Psalms chapter 32, verse 5 and 6. So our ancestors' sins, if there are ancestors who've lived 50 years, 100 years, on both sides, for how many generations? And then... It's an, you know, it's bad enough that they've passed their sins, but then to see other people being ruined and to curse them and say, oh yeah, they deserve that. They pass that to their children. So even though I, I may not have, be, I may not, not have committed the sins of being a traitor, but if our ancestors looked at a traitor and said, oh yeah, I'm glad they were ruined, because of those words, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 17 to 88, uh, 17 to 18. Because our ancestors said the wrong things and their actions were wrong, that all comes down to me. So up till last na- night, we received grace and it was good. But after waking up, already we have evil coming from us, this greed. And where there's this greed, demons stick, so we can't meet the Lord. So we have these heavy burdens. We have those thorns that our ancestors have made. And so we can't smile. You know, you, you know, you don't want to, you're scared to do anything because of those thorns. So that's why you're tired and you're weary. You don't do well. But when is it we can meet the Lord? Daily. And what are we going to do? We have to entrust our burdens. And we have to receive help. He will, we have to go the way that he directs us. That's how we live. This has to happen every day. This has to happen every day. Let's say to the person next to us. They can't, if the person next to you can't even say amen. You know, if I say this, that's when they force themselves to say amen. 100%. That's a double-minded demon. You know, if you said, oh, I can't say amen, but no, you pretend that you can't. You look at, you meet someone like that, they want to embezzle you. They they always talk about money. But if I was stupid, I'd listen to that. You have to be the same to listen to that. Already, we see their actions. They can't smile. They can't say amen. Ah, this is a demon. That's someone who has is filled with disasters and curses. God's taught us this. They can't smile. They're not inside of Christ. So they're not a son of God. They don't have faith. If they have faith, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, you receive all joy. You keep smiling, but you can't smile. 
But even worldly demons, even if you're rotten on the inside, if you smile on the outside, at least you're popular with your customers. So you look at a restaurant or a business. When they pick employees, they don't pick someone who doesn't smile. But if you meet the Lord, your, your true character, your inside and your outside is the same. So let's meet the Lord. Is this our men? We have to do well. We have to do more well. We have to go to heaven. So if we want to go to heaven, who do we have to meet? So now you know. How is it that you know? But it's daily. So if we meet him daily, so firstly, he bears our burdens. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says, come to me all with, you know, who, are, who have these heavy burdens. But you see these pastors that say, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. They themselves aren't doing well. If the pastor in front of you isn't doing well, everyone can't do well. Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. If they're not doing well and they have to write the sermon down, you know, why do you call that a church? God says, if you don't have Christ the Lord, then, then that's not a church because there's no salvation. Let's find Psalms chapter 68, verse 19 again. So it's daily. So today too. Let's repent of our sins and our ancestors' sins. Then who do you meet? The Lord. And where does he take me? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. The blessings in front of me, only the Lord can take me to, t- to, to guide me there. If the Lord doesn't guide me, then it's demons who drag me. Your children, your spouses, your, sp- uh, your husband or wife. You look at them when they act crazy. You look at them, they're not acting like a man, but they just do that. If you have grumbling and complainings, that small greed, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1, you depart. You hate wisdom because you don't want to go to heaven. Why is it that you're taught this and you still don't know? So you look at someone who's fallen into trials, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. It says to exhort daily. So you, you have a demon. You have that greed inside of you, in your heart, and that's why you're gossiping and cursing in the background. Jesus, whether it was in the field or the mountains, even amongst demons, he 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 gives worship. Why? Because he's the strongest. It's the weak that have excuses. The strong have no excuses. So you have to only receive the blessings in front of you, but you can't even say amen. So you're not a child, you're a demon. How can you do well? So you eat up your children. Your children will never do well. You will never do well. Oh, if you still do well, then Proverbs chapter 24, verse 1, then you'll be ruined in the most evil way. If you're ruined in a small way, at least people aren't hurt. But if you build up high, then people are killed. So there's a... Uh, so uh, uh, the president of McDonald's he didn't believe in Jesus and he earned all this money and then he ended up just um, he, he killed in his own car is that doing well? Proverbs chapter 24 21 verse 4 the evil doing well that's a scary disaster someone who doesn't say amen who hasn't met the Lord who isn't a sheep who hasn't who doesn't have thanksgiving who makes excuses that person will be completely ruined Sometimes those people come and stick next to you and they want to make you fall according to your sins and your ancestors' sins. That's the demons playing up. You need to be careful. But it's not going to work by being careful. You have to do four-step repentance and meet the Lord. That's when all things will be solved. Is this our men? Let's, let's live well. So he has to guide me. If I go by my strength, then I'll be ruined. I'll fall into trial. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But if we're guided, then we receive blessings. Our children do well. We have blessings in our late age. It's only the Lord who directs us. And we go to the love of God. That's why there's all this money. That's the first thing he gives. He's created us with love. And with happiness, he gives us unlimited money. Oh, don't come home. Just just send money. That's what these women say. But if you're given money, once you're full, well, isn't there a horse for me to ride? And then once you have a horse, is there a servant who can look after the horse? So you have unlimited greed. But how hungry are you that you say, don't come home, just send the money? You know, how regretful is this? That's how much 
We need money. The Father knows this, and that's why He created money first, all of creation. He created us after there were no lackings. But then we don't take the things that He tells us to take, and we grumble and complain. We have to meet the Lord to take it. Today, He will give it to us. He will guide our hearts. So let's read. Blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burden, the God who is our salvation. Amen. So it's daily. What you did yesterday, you know, that doesn't mean you don't have to do it today. It's daily. And when it says daily, it means the whole day. So after three times a day, that's how the day goes past. So you have to realize your sins for one hour. And then how you've tormented him to ask for forgiveness for one hour. And then for to ruin my heart where I've been dragged around by demons and not receiving the Lord's guidance one hour. And then an hour of thanksgiving. So that's four hours. So in 12 hours of the day, if you do this three times, then the day's gone. So we have to do it the whole day. Psalms 55 verse 17, three times a day, just like eating your meals. So daily, if we meet the Lord, He takes our burdens and He guides us. Where does He guide us to? Firstly, to the love of God, because love is the greatest. And so once you're taken there, you're like, Lord, I'm so happy and so thankful. And so it's like, okay, well, I'll give you money for free. And He makes you store it up in your storehouse. That is the love of God. So if He gives you money, what won't He give you? He gives you everything. So that is the way to go to heaven. This is the blessing we have to receive for us and our children to do well. Is this our men? So the whole day, all we do is confess our sins and our ancestors' sins and to receive the Lord's help. So secondly, where does he take us? So four-step repentance, which is patience. Job, because he was patient, he received blessings. James chapter 5, verse 11. Can I be patient? No, you have to meet the Lord to be patient. Someone who goes back and forth to church, if they have demons, they just come when they feel like it or when they're really, you know, frustrated. So I met someone yesterday and he was like, now that I'm now after, now that I'm 60 or 70, now he's afraid of God. Before that, he wasn't. You know, he couldn't see God before, but, but now he's saying God is living. What he, what, if he wants to do something, he feels afraid. That's because you weren't led by the Lord in your, in your hearts, and that's why everything you did was ruined. It's too late by then. Psalms 119, verse 67. How much do you have to suffer for your, hab- your habits and your actions to change, to meet the Lord and to obey Him? So why go the way of suffering? Today, let's end it. If I meet the Lord, my children do well. Our country does well. Today, let's only receive this blessing. Is this amen? Let's call upon the Lord three times and let's only repent of our ancestors' sins and my sins. So if you go out and something's not working out, quickly, you have to realize, oh, I'm, I'm off with the demons. You're being dragged by the demons. If you don't repent, if you have sin, that's what happens. So if there's a problem, quickly to say that sin's mine. But you're like, oh, deacon, uh, that Mr. Kim, you know, he's wrong. But that's you, you, that's your mirror. That's my ancestor's sins and my sins. If you quickly realize, then it's blessings. Your children will do well. Today, let's be victorious. Is this amen? Let's call upon the Lord three times and receive blessings. Lord. Lord, Lord, Father God, to be a son by four-step repentance, then we say amen, we have thanksgiving. May we walk with the Lord and we overflow with love and to receive unlimited blessings and to endure, to wait to the end, to have this patience. Let's, let's repent completely and receive all these blessings.